In the last video, we programmed the finite difference method in order to find a numerical solution to our boundary value problem. Now in order to analyze how the error changes according to the value of the end that we choose, we'll create a function that outputs the maximum absolute error. I've copied and pasted the work we did in the previous video. We'll define our function with an input of n. Before we start any calculations though, let's clear all so that we can avoid any errors. Hit enter. And we'll need the exact equation in order to find the maximum absolute difference later on. So we'll desolve our equation u double prime of x plus u prime of x and plus u of x equal to 1 with our boundary condition u of 0 equal to 1.5 and u of 3 equal to 2.5 where we want to solve u with respect to x. And now we can make our table of differences. So our table of difference be a table that contains the absolute value of n solution of i minus u exact evaluated at x equal to the x's of i where i goes from 1 to n plus 1 and we can use the max function to find the maximum absolute error. We'll call this max difference, which is the max of the table of difference. And let's wrap our entire function inside round brackets. Shift enter. And now let's test it with the table function with n from 4 to 10, just so we can get an h less than 1. So table n, the function of n, where n goes from 4 to 10. And we'll see that in matrix form. Shift enter. And as we can see, the error decreases as we increase n as expected. Now, because we use the centered finite difference scheme, our absolute error should be proportional to the step size squared. We can test this by plotting the absolute error versus h, and then fitting the nonlinear model e equals a times h squared. Now we get our error, which is a table containing 3 over n and the function of n, where n goes from 4, and this time let's make it 15. Now let's list plot that just so we can see the values. Shift enter. And it looks fairly quadratic. Now this graph is showing us that increasing the step size also increases the error. Now let's try using the nonlinear model fit function to see if it matches the expected relationship. Scrolling down, and we'll input this into model, which is the nonlinear model fit of error fit into a times x squared with a parameter a and a variable x. And let's set our max iterations to 1000. Shift enter. And we get the following fitted model. Now plotting and obtaining the r squared value. We'll grab the r squared from model. And then plot the best fit of model 
where x goes from 0 to 1.5 at an epilogue with a point size medium grabbing our points from error. And we'll label our graph error versus h. Now shift enter. The r squared value is very close to 1, and the data points fit very close to the curve. As a result, we can see that our absolute error is proportional to the step size squared, as expected with the basic finite difference scheme. So to wrap everything up, we looked at solving boundary value problems using a finite difference method scheme. Once we found the solution, we then created a function that gave us our absolute maximum error depending on our number of intervals, n. Once we made that function, we used the nonlinear model fit function to check to see if our absolute errors were proportional to the square of the step size as we can expect from the basic centered finite difference. That's all for our final tutorial. Hopefully these videos have been helpful to all of you in some way or another. As always, good luck with your labs.